Today we are looking at the 10 biggest drone mistakes new pilots make with the DJI Air 3. In the eagerness to get flying your new drone as a beginner, there are certain things you might overlook that could potentially ruin your day flying, ranging from unusable footage all the way up to potentially damaging or crashing your drone. These quick tips should prevent any of that from happening based on my learning experiences and mistakes I have made from flying drones for many years. Let's jump right in. Now, if you're new around here, welcome to The Drone Creative, the channel that helps you learn more about flying drones. From the basics to the most advanced techniques to help you get better looking images and more cinematic videos with your drone. So if you would like to see more of that then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below and when you're down there make sure to click the notification bell as well so that you will be alerted when one of my new tutorials is released. It would be greatly appreciated. And let's start with the first drone mistake new pilots make and that is flying when you see the gimbal stock warning. Now when you turn the DJI Air 3 on for the first time, the gimbal will always do a quick calibration check to make sure that it is free from obstruction and that it can move around in all the ways required to stabilize your footage when flying and be able to rotate the gimbal upwards and downwards. But because the gimbal on the DJI Air 3 is larger, it can be quite easy to snag this on your backpack, for example, or have it resting on something as you turn the drone on. And this means that when it does that self calibration check, it won't be able to move around freely. If you have a backpack pressing on the bottom of it, for example, when it tries to rotate upwards or downwards, it might not be able to do that. And the result of that means that when it tries to do that diagnostic check, it will fail and you will get a gimbal stuck warning on the top of your controller screen. Now there's two reasons why you don't want to take the drone off if you see this gimbal stuck warning. The first and the most important is because sometimes when you take the drone off with this gimbal stuck warning, the gimbal can actually start to vibrate violently in the air, making it impossible to get smooth footage, which is what you want when capturing videos with your drone. And the second reason is because sometimes when you see this gimbal stuck warning, if you try to rotate the gimbal upwards or downwards using the scroll wheel on the back of the controller, the gimbal won't actually move. It won't rotate upwards or downwards. So how do we clear the gimbal stuck warning well it's actually very straightforward all you need to do is put your drone back down somewhere where there is no obstructions and nothing resting against the gimbal so that it can move around freely and then you simply want to turn the drone off and turn it back on again it will redo the self calibration check and if there was nothing obstructing it this time then you won't see that gimbal stuck warning and you are free to fly your drone around and get buttery smooth footage instead of the jerky footage you might get if you see that gimbal stuck warning. Now the next mistake is not understanding that the DJI Air 3 actually has two return to home modes. It has the traditional return to home mode that you might be familiar with if you have other DJI drones such as the Mini 3 Pro, which is where you set a return to home altitude on the controller. And you must make sure to set this return to home altitude higher than any of the obstacles around you. Because if you engage return to home, or if return to home engages automatically, if for example you lose signal between the controller and the drone, the drone will rise up in the air to that altitude you have set, it will fly back to above the home point, and then it will land automatically on that home point. But the Air 3 actually comes with a second advanced return to home mode. So how does this advanced return to home mode differ from the traditional return to home mode. Well, during advanced return to home, the Air 3 will automatically plan an optimized flight route, which means it won't rise up to a set altitude. Instead, it will rise up to an altitude it deems necessary to fly safely back to you. And as it flies back to you, it will use its omnidirectional obstacle sensing to make sure it avoids obstacles and return to the home point quickly and safely. So what are the benefits of using this advanced return to home mode? Well, if return to home engages because you have a critically low battery, or if you have a low battery and you lose signal to your drone and return to home engages, having the drone rise up to a set altitude, as in the traditional return to home mode, can use up quite a lot of battery and take a little bit of time, especially if you have that altitude set quite high. Whereas if you use this advanced return to home mode, the drone will actually work out an optimized height for the drone to rise up to, meaning that in a lot of cases, it won't actually have to fly up very high at all. 
and this saves battery and saves time as the drone comes back to you, which is critically important if you have a low battery on your drone. Now, by far the biggest mistake I've seen new pilots make when they first get a drone is the thinking that if you lose signal to your drone and return to home engages automatically, that the drone will fly back to where you are standing, even if you have moved from where you took the drone off. So if you take the drone off and you are tracking yourself and you've moved a distance from where you took that drone off, return to home will fly the drone back to where the controller is and where you are currently standing. But that is not the case. It's very important to understand this. The drone doesn't return to where the controller is. It returns to what's called a home point. And that home point is set when you took the drone off. So it's very important to understand that return to home will return the drone back to where you took the drone off from unless you update that home point. Now this is important to know because if you have the drone tracking yourself and you've walked quite a distance from where you took the drone off, you lose signal and return to home engages, the drone will fly back to where you took the drone off, which could be a good distance away from where you're now currently standing because you've been tracking yourself, hiking, running, cycling, etc. Or even more critically, if you're on a lake in a boat, for example, and you have took the drone off from that boat and your boat has now moved to a new location and returned to home engages, well, you need to understand that that drone is going to go back to where you took the drone off from. And if your boat is no longer in that location, it could potentially land in the water. So you need to make sure in those scenarios that you're updating the home point. To do this, you want to again go to the settings menu by tapping the three dots on the top right of the controller screen. And under the safety menu, you want to scroll down and press the update home point button. And on this next window, you can either update the home point to the current location of the drone, or if you press this controller icon on the top right, you can then update the home point to the current position of the controller. Once you are happy, press OK. And this now means if return to home engages, the drone will now return to this new updated home point. But please remember, if you then again move to a new location from where you've just updated the home point to, the drone will go back to that home point, not where you are standing. So it's important that you update the home point regularly if you are on a lake moving around on a boat, for example, or if you're tracking yourself and you have moved a large distance from that location to make sure the drone will always come back to you and not where it took off from. Now the DJI Air 3 comes with an amazing new three times telecamera, which lets you get super creative clips with your drone enabling things like parallax and background compression to get incredibly cinematic looking clips. However, something you do not want to do is move your drone around using that three times telecamera. Firstly, you might not see obstacles until it's too late because there might be on-site obstacles when using that three times telecamera. Because you are pushing in on your subject, you're zoomed in on your subject, you might not see obstacles to the left or right of your drone because the camera is zoomed past them. And as you move the drone around, you might not see the obstacle to the left or right of your drone until it's too late. And again, this can result in you flying your drone into one of them obstacles. And another reason is you might not realize how fast the drone is flying when using that three times telecamera. If you're doing a move such as an orbit around a subject, because the subject is staying stationary and you're zoomed in towards it, the drone might actually look like it's not moving that fast on the screen of the controller. But in reality, the drone is actually covering a large distance at speed. And you won't realize this unless you look at the drone visually in the air or look at the speed indicator on the bottom left of your controller. If you take a look at these two clips using the three times telecamera and the normal one times wide angle camera, it can look as if when flying the drone with the three times telecamera that it is moving slower. But if you look at the speed indicator on the bottom left of the screen, you can see the drone is actually flying at the same speed in both these clips. And again, this can result in you thinking that an obstacle is far enough away, you're not flying fast enough to ever get near it. And then before you know it, the obstacle is right next to the drone. So if you are moving the drone around and you're not recording a video, then please make sure to switch back to that one times wide angle camera so that you have a better perspective when moving the drone around so that you can fly it safer and avoid obstacles and that you can gauge the distances between them obstacles and know the speed of your drone so that you don't end up in close proximity to them. Now, if you're looking the highest quality footage from the Air 3, you want to make sure to avoid 
this next mistake, and that is using the digital zoom modes. Now, the Air 3 comes with a one times wide angle camera, but it also comes with a three times telecamera. Now you can digitally zoom in on the one times wide angle camera up to three times zoom, and you can digitally zoom up to nine times on the three times telecamera. But you have to remember that when you start zooming in on these cameras, this is actually a digital zoom. It's cropping in on the camera sensor. And the further you digitally zoom in on these cameras, the lower quality video you're going to get. By the time you've digitally zoomed up to nine times on the three times telecamera, you're going to see a significant loss in quality. And so you want to avoid doing this if you're looking the highest quality footage possible. The next mistake you might make, and this is especially true if you are a beginner to video editing and color grading, is choosing to use color modes such as D-Log AM and HLG when you have no experience on how to color grade them to get the benefits. Now you might have read when waiting to get your drone or you've just been flying your drone for a while that using D-Log AM and HLG can get you better looking footage from your drone. And this is true. D-Log M, for example, captures footage in a flatter, muted color profile. And this color profile captures more dynamic range, contrast, and detail. And when you hear this, as a beginner, you might think, well, I want all them things, so I'm just going to capture footage in that mode. But then what might happen is when you get back home, upload the footage onto your computer, are excited to see what you've captured, you play back the videos and realize they're very desaturated, they're very gray, and they're very flat. And that is because them color modes require you to color grade them afterwards to make them look normal and to get the benefits. And if you don't know how to do that and you don't know how to color grade, or maybe you just don't have the time to do it, then you're going to have a lot of gray and unusable footage. So if you are an absolute beginner, even for your first few flights, until you get used to flying the drone, used to moving the drone around smoothly to get nice cinematic clips, then I recommend keeping the color mode set to normal. You are still going to get exceptional looking clips with the normal color mode. I personally use the normal color mode 99% of the time and you won't be disappointed with the results. Also, if you're somebody who just wants to get great looking clips with your drone and download them to your computer and use them straight away, have them look great straight from the drone to upload to things like social media, such as Instagram or YouTube, then again, I recommend using the normal color profile as this means you won't have to do additional color grading because the clips already look great straight from the drone. Then once you get a bit more experience, and if you want to get into the world of color grading, then you can start to use the modes such as D-Log M and HLG for their benefits, but do be aware that that footage will require color grading for them clips to become usable. Now, another mistake I see new pilots make all the time when first getting a drone is not realizing that if you put the drone into sport mode, obstacle avoidance turns off. This is very important to realize. Now, if you have obstacle avoidance turned on and set to break and bypass, it's very important to understand that these modes will only work in cine and normal flight mode. If you change the drone to sport mode, you will see a warning appear on the screen, although it's very easy to ignore or miss this, saying that obstacle avoidance has turned off, and then it doesn't matter what mode you have set obstacle avoidance to, it switches to off. So if you're flying your drone around in sport mode and you're flying close to obstacles, please be very, very careful. The drone will not stop itself if it sees an obstacle. And again, remember in sport mode, the drone is flying very fast and the faster the drone is flying forwards or backwards, the longer it takes the drone to stop when you let off the joysticks. So if you're flying your drone fast and you see an obstacle and you let off the joysticks for it to stop, don't think that the drone will immediately come to a stop and hover in the air. The drone will actually have to fly forwards for a bit to be able to stop itself. There will be a buffer between when you let off the joysticks and the drone will come to a stop, which means if you're hurtling towards an obstacle, you see it too late, you let off the joysticks, the drone might fly into that obstacle in sport mode as it tries to stop itself. So if flying in sport mode fast and around obstacles, please be very, very careful and remember obstacle avoidance is off in sport mode. The next mistake you might make as a beginner is increasing the sharpness too much. If you have been exploring the settings menu, under the camera settings menu, if you scroll down, you will see an option to increase or decrease the sharpness and also a noise reduction option. 
Now you might make the mistake of thinking, okay, sharper footage is better and cranking that sharpness all the way up to plus two. But actually overly sharpened footage can look too digital. It can look too sharp and unnatural to the eye. And this can make your footage look worse. And additionally, I have found that footage that comes from the Air 3 already looks very sharp. So you don't want to dial that sharpness up any further. Another mistake you might make is not checking the propellers before your flight. Now the propellers on the Air 3 are quick release, which means you can press them in and turn them to remove them or press them in and turn them the other way to lock them in place. And this might be new to you if you've come from a drone such as the DJI Mini 2 or DJI Mini 3 Pro, where then propellers are actually attached with little screws. Now this is important because this makes it easier for these propellers, the quick release ones in the Air 3, to become loose or actually to become detached if you're doing things like jamming your Air 3 down into a camera bag, or if you just have the drone positioned in your camera bag in such a way that something's pressing against one of them quick release propellers, well, it might actually come loose in your camera bag. With a drone that you might have had before, which had the propellers which attach with screws, this would obviously be less of an issue because it would be much harder for them propellers to ever become loose because they are held in place with a screw. But due to the quick release nature of the Air 3 propellers, this is something you want to pay more attention to and check before each flight. And the reason you want to check this is because if that propeller is loose and you go to take the drone off or the drone is already in the air and it works itself fully loose and that propeller pops off, well then that obviously spells disaster. So it takes a few seconds before each flight when you take the drone out of your bag to make sure that they are securely in place. The last mistake I see new pilots make is putting too much trust in the obstacle avoidance, especially when doing things like active tracking. The obstacle avoidance on the DJI Air 3 is very, very good, but it's not foolproof. If you put your drone in really complex situations, Let's say it's tracking you, you're moving very fast, so the drone is flying around very fast. Maybe you're doing a fast orbit of yourself and there are a lot of obstacles in the area. The drone could crash or clip one of them obstacles. Although as mentioned, the obstacle avoidance is very, very good. If there is a lot of obstacles, it might not see one of them obstacles until it is too late and this could result in the drone flying into it. The mode I find riskiest when doing active tracking is the POI mode, the point of interest mode where the drone orbits around you as you're moving, if you have that mode set so that the orbit is very fast. This is very complex for your drone. It's flying around you fast while you're moving, while detecting obstacles as it does that path or that orbit around you. And this can lead to scenarios where the drone just doesn't see an obstacle on its side until it's too late. And because it's flying very fast and you're moving fast, again, this could result in that drone crashing. The drone might also just not see or detect an obstacle. The types of obstacles I have found all drones struggle with are things like power cables, telephone cables, small branches. Basically, if you struggle to see it on the controller screen, then the drone will probably struggle to see it. I have had lots of instances where flying where I've nearly got caught out with power cables or small branches just because the drone can't detect them because they're so small. So here's the rule of thumb I use. If I personally wouldn't fly a drone in a location because I thought it was too risky, then I wouldn't make the drone do it automatically. So if you are in a location and you think there's too many obstacles, there's too many power cables, there's too many small branches, I wouldn't trust myself to be able to fly the drone safely in this location, then don't rely on the drone's automatic systems to do it because if you're going to struggle, chances are it's going to struggle. So there you have it. There's 10 mistakes new pilots make with the DJI Air 3. And hopefully these tips will help you keep your drone safe in the air when you're out flying so that you can capture incredible videos and images with this drone. Now, before you go, if you liked this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better looking images and more cinematic videos with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. And if you don't want to miss any of my upcoming tips, tricks and tutorials for drones, then please remember to go down below and click that subscribe button and make sure that notification bell is checked as well so that you will be alerted when one of my new videos comes out. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of my videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. 
I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.